Welcome to Shujin Academy VGM Club. I'm Professor Tom, your faculty sponsor. That is the opening theme for Sega's classic motorcycle racer, Super Hang-On. If you're not familiar with Super Hang-On, it's a third-person racing game where you ride a motorcycle. It uses a vanishing point perspective to create the appearance that you're driving towards the horizon, like a lot of 2D racing games. And it uses Sega's superscalar hardware to enlarge objects as they come closer to you. Sega's designers loved this pairing to create a feeling of immersion in the player. But Sega didn't stop trying to immerse you with what happened on screen. When you make an arcade cabinet, you get to create the exact control scheme that will work for your game, and you even get to customize the aesthetic of the cabinet to feel like your game. You can forego the joystick and buttons for a steering wheel and pedals for a racing game, or a light gun for a shooting game. You can give your cabinet a color scheme and molded plastic and elaborate paintings to create an absolutely perfect feel. The 80s and 90s were an absolute golden age for this. You'd go into an arcade and the best cabinets would be lovingly detailed to entice you into handing over your tokens. There'd be a row of sit-down cockpit machines for games where you raced a car or flew an airplane or even blasted off into outer space. The greatest designer of arcade cabinets was Sega. If an arcade owner really wanted to impress customers, they'd put some money into some of Sega's amazing super deluxe arcade cabinets. These went beyond the normal sit-down arcade cabinets where you just sat down in front of a steering wheel or a control yoke or whatever. They went way beyond. Sadly, there aren't a lot of these amazing cabinets out in the wild anymore. They were expensive to make and buy, and they required a lot of maintenance. Video game arcades were nearly dead before the pandemic, and COVID has taken a nail gun to their coffin. If you are lucky enough to find one in an arcade, or maybe even at a collector's house, play it. I promise you'll have an awesome time you can't replicate. The games also had incredible soundtracks because 1980s Sega did not miss. All these awesome games with their fancy cabinets had track after track of stone cold bangers. This episode of the podcast is all about the music from games with these fantastic cabinets. I've also included some YouTube links in the show notes of people playing the games featured today, so you can see how cool these deluxe cabinets really were. Let's start by talking about the Hang On games. Hang On and its sequel Super Hang On were, as I mentioned, about motorcycle racing. And their cabinets had a set of motorcycle handlebars with a hand throttle and brake, just like a real motorcycle. In the normal cabinets, you'd turn the handlebars to steer. But we're talking about deluxe cabinets today, and the deluxe hang-on cabinets had an actual replica motorcycle you could sit on to play the game. If you wanted to steer, you leaned the motorcycle left or right. Paired with the handlebars and the amazing game, it felt like driving a real motorcycle at over 100 miles an hour, but much safer. We're going to start with main theme from Hang On, composed by Hiroshi Hiro Kabaguchi, and then Outright a Crisis from Super Hang On, composed by Katsuhiro Hayashi and Koichi Namiki.
Outrun is a classic 
In my opinion, it's the greatest driving game ever made. It perfectly captures the feel of a fun drive through the countryside, trying to push your car as fast as it can go, feeling free and adventurous. The standard stand-up and cockpit cabinets both had a lot of flair, particularly the standard cockpit cabinet, which had molded wheels and bright red styling to look like the Ferrari Testarossa Spider that you drive in the game. There was the Super Deluxe cabinet, though, that slid left and right as you took corners, pushing you into your seat. It's so cool. And the soundtrack is phenomenal. Lots of electronic composers cite it as an influence, and it gets the feel of driving just right. Over the course of the podcast, I will probably play every single song from it eventually, but I'm going to limit myself to just two today. We're also going to play a song from the lesser-known game Radmobile, which is very similar to OutRun. It's played from a first-person perspective instead of OutRun's third-person perspective. It's Sega's first 32-bit game, and it looks amazing. It carries the same setup as OutRun of a drive all the way across the United States, but it adds some interesting realistic elements where there are stages where you're driving at night or in the rain and you have to turn on headlights or windshield wipers to deal with that. There's also a little sonic action figure hanging from your rearview mirror that sways back and forth as you drive. And of course, there was a deluxe cabinet that Sega made for it that tilted back and forth to create the feeling of driving and road motion. There was one even farther beyond deluxe cabinet that Radmobile could be played on, but we'll get to that a little later on in the show. We'll be listening to Magical Sound Shower and Passing Breeze, both from OutRun and both composed by Hiroshi Kawaguchi. And we'll listen to a track from Radmobile called Submission and Domination. I couldn't find the composer, but... I like the whole soundtrack for Radmobile and this track in particular.
This episode of Shujin Academy VGM Club is brought to you by Potion. If you've been beaten up by enemies and you need some HP, have a Potion. It's guaranteed to get you 30 hit points or more. Available at local item shops in a town near you. Big thanks to Potion for sponsoring the show. While Sega's driving game cabinets were impressive, they really went to the next level once they took to the skies. Galaxy Force 2 is a rail shooter set in space where you and your lone ship challenge a series of alien bases to save Earth from the evil Fourth Empire's armada. It had an absolutely insane cabinet that could roll, pitch, and yaw like an aircraft simulator. This thing was a combination of video game and theme park ride, and if you saw it in an arcade, it was the coolest thing there. The deluxe cabinet even included a headphone jack so you could get deeper into the immersion. If you only look up one game from this episode, you should look up Galaxy Force 2 so you can see how awesome this thing was. There was a cabinet in one of the arcades near my house, and my mom would never let me go in there because she thought it was where local drug deals went down. I have never forgiven her for that. Anyway, the soundtrack from Katsuhiro Hayashi and Koichi Namaki is incredible, and we'll be listening to Beyond the Galaxy, Defeat, and Take Back, which are the themes for the first three levels. And while we take a break and listen to the music, I'll think about my complicated relationship with my parents.
Now, I wasn't there at Sega headquarters when it happened, but I'm sure the initial pitch for Afterburner went, what if we took that cool F-14 movie Top Gun and made it into a video game? It's certainly a better Top Gun video game than the officially licensed NES game. And the deluxe cabinet for Afterburner was almost as over the top as the Galaxy Force 2 cabinet. The chair and monitor would rotate left and right with the airplane as it twisted through the sky, and the whole cabinet could tilt backwards or forwards about 30 degrees to really get you into the action. Even the stand-up cabinet was over the top with a bunch of flashing lights that went off as events happened in the game. While we're on the subject of 1980s vehicle movies turned into action games, I'm Sure, someone at Sega saw the awesome helicopter movie Blue Thunder and maybe a few episodes of the TV show Airwolf and said, we should make an attack helicopter game. That was the impetus for Thunderblade, which had a deluxe cabinet with helicopter landing skids and a rotating pilot's chair. It features a control stick that sits between the player's legs, along with a throttle control intended for use by the player's left hand, like a simplified version of actual helicopter controls. These games were great at giving the player the feeling of being the hero pilot in an action movie, and the soundtracks helped out. From Afterburner, we'll be listening to Final Takeoff and Afterburner. Yes, there's a song called Afterburner in the game Afterburner, much like how Black Sabbath recorded a song called Black Sabbath for their album called Black Sabbath. And from Thunderblade, we'll be listening to Burning Point, composed by Katsuhiro Kayashi and Koichi Namaki.
One final note. Earlier, I mentioned that Sega made a cabinet for Radmobile that went even beyond the deluxe cabinet. It's called the R360, and it is hands down the craziest cabinet Sega ever made. It ranks up there with the Galaxian Theater cabinet as one of the craziest arcade cabinets ever made, full stop. The R360 could rotate the player in any direction, including doing multiple flips or hanging them upside down. The only games it supported were Radmobile, Wing War, and G-Lock, and there were less than 250 cabinets made, but I had to talk about it in my show about amazing Sega arcade hardware. There's a YouTube video of this insane thing in action in the show notes. Check it out. Thanks for listening. I'm Professor Tom, and I'll see you next time on Shujin Academy VGM Club.